What's up, everyone? Thomas here with For Real Movie News and Reviews, and I am so excited today to be here talking with the director and the cast of the TIFF-selected film, You Are Not My Mother, which is a film that is every bit as eerie as the title might imply. Um, I want to um, congratulate all of you on the film being screened at, at TIFF. I think, I mean, this seems like a really great opportunity and an exciting time for you guys. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's super exciting. It's like, um, yeah, I was saying it's like just kind of like a dream come true to be have your debut feature um, at TIFF Midnight Madness. It's just like such a well renowned program. And I think the selection is so small that it feels very special to be included in it. And um, yeah, I always love the movies that come out of Midnight Madness. So it's um, very yeah. exciting. Yeah, for sure. And congratulations, of course, Kate, on this being your feature uh, debut uh, written and directed by you. So congrats. That's awesome. Um, let's actually just start with some introductions uh, real quick. Kate, I'll start with you. If you can introduce uh, yourself a little bit, your background um, in the filmmaking industry. And since this movie takes place around Halloween, tell me what your favorite Halloween candy is. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um yeah so I um grew up in Dublin um kind of where the film is set really in North Dublin um a lot of the film takes place there so that's kind of where I grew up and um yeah I, I always just like think from an early age um just had a real love of cinema and my mum kind of exposed me to a lot of movies that maybe she shouldn't have when I was too small and I think it really just um set up a love of movies and cinema um, from a really early age. And then I just, I got the bug and I couldn't get rid of it. Um, so then I uh, went to the film school in Ireland. There's kind of like one big film school you can go to college for here. And I went there. Well, at the time when I went, that was kind of the main one you went to. And um, yeah, and then I, I, when I left film school, I kind of did the odd jobs. I worked in the art department a good bit on kind of feature films and uh, commercials and that kind of stuff and then I kind of took a plunge with a uh, short film called Little Doll where we self-financed it and uh, I wrote the script and directed it and that um, then premiered at Berlin Alley in like 2016 and then off the back of that I got some funding to make Cat Calls which was my next short with Screen Ireland um, and then POV, the scheme that we made You Are Not My Mother on came along, which is kind of to uplift female writer directors and um, get you to kind of the stage of your first feature on a, this micro budget kind of level. Um, and it just was great. It was amazing. It was just like a great process with Screen Ireland and making it. And um, yeah, now we're here, which is kind of mad. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> No, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, Carolyn, this Oh, month... wait, my Halloween candy. Oh, yes, I your forgot. Halloween candy. This yeah. is important. <laughs> um, so in Ireland, we probably don't have all the same ones that you do. So we probably have different different well, ones, actually. I, I'm, but... I'm interested in, in hearing what candy I can add to my Halloween <laughs> collection. <laughs> One thing I used to love, so they have these ones like that uh, used to come in a little bag and they were called rainbow drops and they were just like puffed like rice that were covered in sugar um and they were like in multicolored kind of like um yeah they were just like rainbow and I was like obsessed with them if a house I really would happen very little that a house would give you them around but like if you got it it was like a real sweet spot <laughs> multicolored candy I, I can definitely get down with that <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn let's move on to you give us a little introduction of yourself and of course your favorite Halloween candy uh, okay. Um, yeah, no, grew up in rural Ireland. I was on stage from quite a young age. My mum just kind of threw us and my three, threw myself and my three sisters into everything and kind of saw what stuck. And with all of us, uh, acting was what, or, or, you know, was what stuck. And uh, so did that throughout my childhood and my adolescence. And then I kind of drifted away from it in my 20s and got, you know, the real job. And um, then uh, I couldn't really stay away from it. So I went back and trained uh, about eight years ago and have just been um, tipping away ever since. You know, this uh, it doesn't happen overnight. So, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, 
being grateful for every role that I can get and uh, absolutely loving every single one that I've been lucky enough to get. And this is my first lead in a feature. So um, Kate took a, took a leap of faith, um, thankfully. So uh, yeah. And, and my favorite, do you know what? My favorite candy, I don't really know, but I do have a favorite game, um, okay. which I don't know whether you guys have over there. And it's just so stupid, <laughs> okay? You put this big mound of flour on a plate, like baking flour, and you put a grape on the top and you have turns of slicing it with a knife and you have to keep slicing it away until it becomes a tower. And the person who drops the grape, when it falls, you have to stick your face into the flower. So that was, that was my favorite play. game. I want to play this game. <laughs> that sounds incredible. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate no it. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hazel, your turn, uh, introduction, and then favorite candy or game. I mean, if, if we're sharing the cool things, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> um, well, I'm also from Dublin. I'm from North Dublin. Um, and I grew up going to, uh, yeah, from when I was like four, I kind of did um, like uh, stage and kind of theater stuff. And I was always into music and singing and dancing and everything. Um, and it was that kind of nine when I discovered how much I loved acting and I went to an acting class that kind of put me forward for a few roles and um, I think <laughs> I think a lot of my confidence in acting or a lot of what like helped me realize that it was a realistic um, thing to pursue was that the first uh, audition I went for I was like so lucky to get um, and it didn't matter then after that it didn't matter how many auditions I had to get through to get the next one um I just always knew from getting that first thing that this is something that just happens sometimes and if it's something that can happen like that then um it's realistic for me to pursue it and if it's something I love why wouldn't I um so yeah I don't think I could do anything else as like as a life job I hate calling it a job but like as a life path I suppose um like the, and that's how most actors feel I think so um yeah so like uh Carolyn I've been chipping away at the old block just kind of making my way and um grateful again for every opportunity that presents itself and uh yeah I just feel very lucky to have gotten to this point absolutely and your favorite candy Halloween candy <laughs> I really love, I love the licorice stuff that, I hate the taste of licorice, but you know the, the licorice that's like red and has like the white inside? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, those really long ones. I love them. They're nice. so good. Um, good. Yeah, good choice there. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys for those introductions. Um, I am excited to talk about the movie, which we'll get into. I, I, but I do need to say, guys, I really, really enjoyed this film. I think we're all very lucky that um, that Kate was in, and the team and you guys were able to come together and make uh, such a creepy, eerie kind of um, uh, horror film. It was it was quite the experience, and I'm excited for people to uh, to experience it as well uh, at TIFF. Um, so congratulations to you guys on that. And I really did appreciate that, especially the performances from Carolyn and, and Hazel. You guys did such a phenomenal job. Um, so let's talk about the film. Kate, can you give us a little um, synopsis of what um, You Are Not My Mother is about? Um, yeah, so it's, it's uh, I suppose, a kind of a psychological, supernatural horror film. Um, that's uh, somewhat a coming of age story about a young girl who lives with her mother and her grandmother and um, her mother is kind of suffering with her mental health silently and then one day she goes missing and the family kind of fear the worst for her but she returns um, and her behavior kind of alters and she starts acting very strangely and it becomes kind of more sinister as the film goes on. And then our protagonist, uh, Shar, she unearths some kind of family secrets which were withheld from her that uh, give her a better insight into what's going on, basically. 
Yeah, super, super creepy kind of premise. And, and the way that it builds is uh, it's incredibly captivating. Um, but uh, I'm interested in how this uh, story developed. Where did the story come from? Uh, and what made you decide that this is what you wanted to make a movie on, Kate? Um, yeah, so it kind of um, was a few different things. Um, firstly, kind of uh, stories from Irish folklore um that were you know we have kind of fairy folklore here in Ireland so um most of the kind of stories would come from different kind of fairy characters who um basically lead uh, humans to their demise and uh, are very mischievous and kind of pull pranks on them and there's a lot of kind of sinister um motives and that kind of thing um so there was that, that, but then also the kind of impact of those folklore stories in reality in kind of, you know, the 17, 1800s in Ireland and how people really believed a lot of those stories and were very superstitious and the impact of that in like people, you know, um, Bridget Cleary in 1895, her husband thought she was a changeling and he burned her alive in a fire. Um, so that's like, you know, the reality of it, which was, you know, incredibly dark. And that like was something that I felt was very interesting. Um, and then the kind of more personal aspect of it was just the kind of uh, coming of age with a parent who, you know, isn't really present and they're, they're struggling with their mental health and that, how scary that can be for somebody coming of age and how, um, how do you deal with kind of generational trauma and how a family trauma can kind of come back and haunt a family again later as like a new generation is coming of age and how does that person the protagonist like Shar in the movie how does she kind of come out of it and be her own person as well as kind of respecting her family's kind of history and uh yeah basically yeah absolutely and I'm, I'm uh Cheryl and uh and sorry Carolyn and Hazel um I'm interested in your your perspectives on these roles um and, and Carolyn we'll start with you what was your perception on um playing Angela and I think since we're talking about a, a scare a horror movie what was the thing that scared you most about taking on this character oh um it was kind of uh in retrospect it was a fear that was in retrospect after we shot it was I realized, oh, um, I'm the scary thing. I really hope I did it right. You know what I mean? It was th that, you know, um, it wasn't there at the beginning um, because I was just so delighted to get the role and just so thrilled to be able to perform and just embody a character like this. It's just incredible. It's a gift. Um, so I think I was on such a high. It was a, a, a retrospective fear um after we shot it that I was like oh god um <laughs> if, 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 that, if, if that if I don't deliver it's kind of uh you know so um yeah but uh hopefully I, it's I, all right I do think you delivered there are actually some really major standout uh, scenes in this movie uh thanks to you and your performance of this uh of this very um strange um thing that you're embodying uh and so yeah I, I think it came across well and, and that's actually very interesting to hear because it was it was such a captivating performance and such a, an eerie creepy performance in, in all the right ways at all the right times so uh so fantastic um thank you yeah for sure hazel uh same to you um what was your perspective on the character that that um that you were playing here as Shar, and what was the scariest thing about about uh playing that character yeah, um, <clears throat> actually, I think the kind of the same as Carolyn going into it, I was just so, um, so thrilled to have gotten the role because it was like, as soon as I read the script, I knew it was something I wanted, like, no matter how hard it took, or no matter how hard it was to, to get it, I was going to get it. Um, or at least that's what you've got in your mind until you don't get it. But <laughs> luckily in this instance. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was... Uh, it wasn't it wasn't really scary until afterwards I suppose um oh no I did have a, a, a quite a fearful first week on set <laughs> as Kate might remember um where I was just kind of very in my head as to as to how the character was going to be played because I knew 
when you when you finish your first week and when you're as you're going through the first week that's how the character has to be for the rest of the shoot and you've mm-hmm. got to make sure that the decisions you're making are the intelligent ones and that they're not going to turn out to be something you regret making a, a um a kind of a uh, part of your your character um later on um so that was kind of probably the most fearful I was on set and it ended up um my fears just kind of dissipated once I realized that like Kate and myself and Carolyn we were all and everybody else on the on the shoot as well like our production designer and Narian like we were all kind of like on just kind of like beginning our journeys I suppose as like creatives so this was like this kind of playground for us to just do whatever we wanted to like the film if it never got seen great it would go under the radar um if if it meant that like if it wasn't a great film if it turned out not to be um yeah no one would see it would be fine but um I think given that freedom um we were able to do like kind of mad things with it and magical things I hope um yeah absolutely absolutely, for sure well, guys, I mean, I could, I could be here and talk with you guys for hours about this, um, but we are coming to the end of our time. Um, Kate, really quickly, um, if, if I, as maybe a closing remark, what do you think uh, you want people to take away from this film when they see it? Um, I always find that, like, that idea very hard. I know, like, sometimes you get asked that when you're, like, pitching projects and stuff. It's like, what do you want people to feel? <laughs> it's like, I have no idea. Um, no, I think, like, I obviously um it like I want this to be an entertaining film and a thrilling film and a enjoyable watch in that you know as a horror movie should but I think um you know the ending it's a kind of a very you know I think a lot of people can relate to it personally it's like kind of about deciding to survive and not kind of leaning into the dark and going and giving up and I think um I suppose that that will just kind of resonate with people and make them feel hopeful um, that, you know, it's not the only option and you can kind of survive and thrive and uh, yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) <laughs> well, I do appreciate again um, you all taking the time to talk with me. Uh, for those watching, this is uh, Kate Dolan, Carolyn um, Beckin, and Hazel Dupe, uh, Dupe. <laughs> uh, from the film You Are Not My Mother, screening at TIFF. Uh, and I hope you guys get the chance to see it. And ladies, thank you again so much for this time. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm looking forward to telling people about this movie. Thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. Cheers. Have a great day.